the royal family has a bit of a problem with, 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 with the sweating. Shocking, dramatic, damaging, worse than the palace feared. Actually, they've got quite a few. The they try the monarchy, the institution. Megan. But all those problems are leading them to an even bigger one. Never before have there been so few working members of the royal family. It's leaving fewer and fewer of them to carry out their official duties, represent charities, cut ribbons, award knighthoods, and open tiny little curtains. So can they keep up? Or are we actually running out of royals? I'm here. The past few years have been a bit of a rough time for the royal family. There was the much publicised departure of Harry and Meghan. Concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. What? There was the very messy downfall of Prince Andrew. Uh, what I would describe as a constant sore in the family. Prince Philip passed away in 2021. Inspired by his unwavering loyalty. And the Queen, she's now in her mid-90s and marking her platinum jubilee. Never before has there been a monarch so old on the British throne. Somebody else can finish it off, do the... So all that has cut by a quarter the number of members of the royal family who are considered working royals. Along with the Queen, there's the next in line to the throne, Prince Charles and his wife Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall. Then William and Kate, who are still striving to make the monarchy look young. There's also the Queen's youngest son, Edward, and his wife Sophie. The Queen's only daughter, Princess Anne, and a few of the Queen's cousins, the Duke of Kent and Princess Alexandra, along with the Duke of Gloucester and his wife. But that is it. And that's a lot different to how it's been over the past few decades. When Elizabeth became queen, she began to expand the family. A lot of this had to do with Prince Philip. They wanted to have options to shore up the hereditary line by promoting the royal family rather than just the monarch. And then the arrival of television suddenly made public appearances a lot more visible. For the first time, cameras were invited into the palace, to family barbecues. The teenage royals were pushed into the spotlight. Members of the royal family became celebrities. Suddenly, the public could see what the royal family was doing. And the more they did, the more value they represented. I think one of the things that happened around the time of, you know, when she ascended the throne in the 50s is you have two things. You've got TV starting and you've got mass transport starting. So suddenly the royal family could not only get out into the UK and meet people and, in, and sort of engage with the world, but they could actually explore the globe. So from the 50s onwards, the Queen and Philip and then later her children and her grandchildren even have gone out and have really sort of exported the monarchy to the world. But the more they did, the more people they needed to share the workload. In 2018, 15 working royals attended 3,900 official engagements. They play an important role for charities and organisations to which they lend their time and their brand. Combined, the royal family are patrons of more than 2,800 organisations in the UK alone. The Queen herself is patron to around 600 charities. Prince Philip was patron to nearly a thousand. Just a fraction of Prince Philip's patronages have been reassigned to other members of the family since his death. The rest will no longer have a royal patron. The royal family just doesn't have enough people. And the younger royals have a bit of a policy of fewer, bigger, better. What we've seen with William and Kate is a real shift and, a, and a, quite a fundamental shift in the way that they take on their charity work. So their view is that they have issues and it, that they are passionate about and that they really want to focus on. And their view is that they're things that they're working on now and they will continue to work on for decades to come. But it's not just the patronages that they're struggling to fill. Even basic appearances and engagements are slipping. In 2019, the number of engagements attended by the Royals dropped by 11% to 3,400. Then it dropped by 56% in 2020 to just 1,500 engagements. Now a lot of that can be put down to the pandemic, but not all of it. 
COVID is one of the main reasons the Queen has slowed right down. Her engagements more than halved from 300 to 127 last year. Being a senior citizen and attending mass public events or greeting a parade of dignitaries isn't the greatest idea in the middle of a pandemic, no matter who you are. And the jab was very, it didn't hurt at all. So it was a necessary move, but the problem is the Queen isn't the only member of the royal family who's, well, a senior. The Duke of Kent and Princess Alexandra are both in their 80s. The Duke and Duchess of Gloucester are in their 70s, along with Charles, who's 73. Camilla is 74, and Anne, she's 71. Sophie and Edward seem relatively sprightly in their mid to late 50s. And then there's Kate and William, both now hitting their 40s. That means the average age of the royal family's workforce is 66 and a half. Prince George still has a few years before he's pressed into service. But think about it, by the time he's 20, his parents may be the only working royals left. I think it's a real issue. The royal family is very much an ageing workforce. You've got the Queen who's 95 and she's still working. You know, if she'd been a, a civil servant, she could have retired 30 years ago. Imagine, you know, in, if you were worked in TV and they were like, we have a 95 year old, <laughs> you know. And so the palace has to think about who goes on the roster to keep the monarchy from just disappearing out of the public eye. And it's the Queen's grandchildren who are really the cause of this shortage. Never before have so few of them stepped up to the plate. King George V had nine grandchildren. Seven went on to work for the Crown, or 77%. King George VI had six children, four of whom either worked or still work as part of the royal family, 66%. The Queen has eight grandchildren. William is currently the only one of them who's a working royal just 14%. All this might not be a problem for one senior royal, the future king, Charles. He is all for a more slimmed down monarchy and would be reportedly quite happy to have just six working members of the royal family left. I think it really comes down to value. You know, Charles wants the royal family to seem like good value to the British people, that they're really getting bang for their buck. Take a look at this. It's pictures like this with 39 royals on the balcony of Buckingham Palace, including a lot you've probably never heard of before, that Charles wants to avoid. And a smaller royal family is not that unusual. Most of the world's remaining monarchies are nowhere near as big as this one. This is the Danish royal family, just seven members. The current queen, along with her son, Prince Frederick, and of course, Crown Princess Mary, originally of Tasmania, along with their four children. The Thai royal family, just six members. In Cambodia, the king is the only working member of the royal family. In many of the world's monarchies, being a member of the royal family is entirely ceremonial. It's certainly not a full-time job, and a lot of it is spent outside the public eye. The King of Holland even has a part-time job as a pilot for KLM. One of the interesting consequences of this sort of current situation is that, you know, the possibility is that um, we're going to see Prince George probably board online or, or sort of, you know, see him starting to undertake official duties perhaps earlier than William and Kate would have liked because they're going to really need more, you know, more royal workers. But it seems that Charles won't just stop at slimming down the family. There's even talk that he'll decommission Kensington Palace. That was home to Harry and Meghan, who took off to the USA, leaving their apartment empty for three years. And there's speculation William, Kate and their family are set to move to Windsor. That would leave the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester, the Duke and Duchess of Kent and Prince and Princess Michael of Kent in residence, with the rest of the palace put up for rent at market rates. Even more radical are suggestions that Charles would convert the lower levels of Buckingham Palace into a museum, open it up to the public, and just live upstairs when he becomes king. The most recent information from London is that most likely Charles will move into Buckingham Palace, with Queen Camilla, of course, we now know, um, and will live above the shop. But I think there is a bigger question here, which is, you know, does it make sense 
in the 21st century for one family to get to live in this enormous, enormous property in the centre of London with I think around 60 acres of garden. You know, does that make sense from a PR perspective? And I really don't think it does and I think that's something that Charles is really cognisant of. Shaping his own image and what the future of the monarchy looks like is actually really important for Charles right now. A recent poll found 70% of Britons support the Queen. For Charles, that number goes way down to 50%. So when the time comes, he'll have to rebuild the brand and the family. For more than 70 years, the Queen has held this whole operation together. We none of us will live forever. When Charles takes over the throne, he'll have to work hard to preserve the legitimacy of the monarchy with even less support around him.